Be careful then how you live. This is the advice that we hear from the author of this letter to the church at Ephesus. These words sound good, but I've spent a lot of time this week trying to get beyond these words and truly grasp their meaning. All week I've wondered, what is the point of this passage for us, the community of faith? This letter was written to a church that was comprised largely of Gentiles who had converted to Judaism as Jews who believed in Jesus as the Messiah. The author has already reminded them that you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In that sentence, the church in Ephesus has been placed firmly in the story of the salvation history of the people of Israel. These people are the people of God. Just like those who wandered with Moses in the wilderness and lived as strangers and aliens in lands that were not their own. Just like those who were cast out of the promised land into exile in Babylon and Persia. Who relied on the prophets for direction and guidance. Just like those apostles who walked and learned at the feet of Jesus. This passage is about the church of God whose cornerstone is Jesus Christ. These words speak to our calling, our vocation, as people of God who live together as a community of faith. Be careful, the writer says. This is not an injunction against risk-taking or a suggestion that we should not be bold or confident. This is a reminder that we do not live on this earth as people who exist only as individuals, with no God to guide us or inspire us. This is a reminder that we are called to live our lives as those who represent a community who knows that we are claimed by God to live out the call that God has placed on our hearts. This passage isn't about what's in it for me. This passage is about what's in it for us. It is so easy this week to come up with a practical example of how careful living might look from both a personal perspective and a faith community perspective. I don't believe it is possible to surf the web or open your paper these days and not see a reminder that our nation is becoming increasingly agitated about the issue of health care reform. Truly, this is a volatile political issue today. And there's a reason for all this volatility. Each person with a voice to be heard in this debate, has a personal story to tell. Each person possesses a desire to get the very best health care available for themselves, for their loved ones, and for others who may need warning. And each person harbors a fear that they will not get what they want. You've no doubt heard many of the same arguments that I have. One story I heard recently come, came from a man in Hood County who was told by the first five doctors he consulted that his cancer was uncurable. The sixth doctor had a different idea and a plan for treatment. Ten years later, this man is certain that government control of the healthcare system will mean that he will not be allowed to seek more than two medical opinions should he have a similar experience in the future. Under the proposed healthcare system, he says, I would have died ten years ago. Another story I read came from a young man named David who watched his mother die of cancer while his father spent 37 years of savings trying and failing to keep up with medical bills. It's possible that her cancer could have been cured, but the procedures her doctor ordered were delayed or denied due to the fact that she was put on probation by her employer's insurance company. David's mother died before many of her doctor's requests were approved. Many people are concerned about the financial burden that the average taxpayer will carry to fund a national health care plan. So many who believe they have good insurance through their employer are fearful that they will be forced to pay for others who are not so fortunate. Of course, there is another side to this story, too. 
The Texas Finish Line campaign works to ensure that every Texas child has access to affordable and comprehensive health care coverage. Currently, around 1.5 million children in our state do not have health insurance. Approximately 90% of these children have at least one working parent. The Texas Finish Line campaign reports that the cost of treating a child's mild asthma attack in the doctor's office will run approximately $100. The cost of treating a child's severe asthma attack in an emergency room when lack of insurance means that the child has had no earlier treatment, is $7,300. Families who cannot afford insurance cannot afford to pay $7,300 for an emergency room visit and hospital care. So what then are we to do? The easy thing to do, I suppose, is to draw from the well of your own experience and align yourself with those who promote a solution that suits you, your family, and your loved ones. But let us return to our scripture. Be careful then how you live. We are children of God, called into a way of living that honors God and honors our neighbor. We are not called to make decisions based solely on what is good for us as individuals. We are called to be a people of faith, defined not by our individual existence, but by our communal claim to God's love and God's grace, not just for our, ourselves, but for everyone. My intent here this morning is not to tell you what to think or how to vote on this or any other issue. My intent is to remind you that the scriptures tell us that we are to live our lives as God's people. In 2 Corinthians 8, verses 13 and 14, Paul states, I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you. But it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. I invite you to ask yourself, where is the balance in this issue? Where is the balance in any issue? Where do we reach the point of justice in God's eyes? We are the body of Christ. I don't believe God calls us to forfeit our right to think for ourselves or make decisions that are based on our own experience and our own needs. But to do these things without giving careful consideration to a much bigger issue, a much bigger picture of what is just and right for our society, not in our eyes, but in God's eyes, is to fail to meet this expectation to which we have been called. But simply, what I am asking you to do today is to remember who you are and whose you are. When you hear these arguments for and against health care reform, I want you to remember that there is always an issue of justice that is far greater than your own individual experience. Look at this issue, at any issue, through the lens of your own life, your own history, your own future, your own needs, and your own wants. But do not forget that you are a person of faith who exists in a community of faith with a long, long history of social justice. Be careful how you live. Act with wisdom. Seek the Lord's will. Recognize the Spirit at work in your life and in our community. Come together to worship and give thanks to our Lord. For it is this Lord who taught us how to live such careful lives. No, Jesus was not careful to not rock the boat. But make no mistake, Jesus was very careful. He was careful to follow his Father's will. He was careful to obey the law, to love God and love neighbor. He was careful to heal those in need, even on the Sabbath. He was careful to heal the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman, even though she was a Gentile. And he was careful to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Be careful then, how you live.